The only way to step into a new future is to confront the aspects of you, the current you, that are not going there. We have to confront the parts of us that cannot come where we're going next, and that feels really uncomfortable. Welcome to Powerhouse Women, the podcast for women who know they are ready for more. I'm Lindsay Schwartz, your host and the founder of Powerhouse Women, and together we'll unlock the confidence and clarity you are looking for to help you get out of your own way and into action around your next big idea. If you know that this is your year to massively expand in any area of life. It could be in your business, your relationships, your spiritual growth, or just your personal growth. Then here's what you need to know. Any bold transformation requires bold action. And today I'm going to break down some of the things that I have leaned into to fuel my growth to help me step into my highest self, to help me become a person that the version of me 10 years ago could not even fathom. And the truth is, it's not always cute. It's not always comfortable. In fact, most of the time it's uncomfortable. But I want to be real with you about what this journey looks like. And we've been talking about it a lot on the podcast because this is typically the time of year that you start to get re-energized around bigger goals. And I want you to know you absolutely can have all of the things you desire and more. You can impact people on such a huge scale. You can have the business and the life and the relationships of your dreams, but it probably is going to look a little bit different to get there than you might think. And so this episode is going to serve as a reminder to you and to me, because I need the reminder all of the time, what it actually takes to get there, what it looks like day in, day out to continue to choose your higher self versus your comfort zone. And It starts off with the realization that we cannot continue to do the same things, to operate in the exact same way, have the same thoughts, the same actions, and expect to get new results. So I don't know if anyone else can relate to this, but I love goals. I always have big goals for myself, my life, my business. But then it comes to waking up that first morning and now being committed to this new goal, knowing it's going to require different actions. And then eventually, sometimes it's in that first day, the first week, the first month, I get to this point where the new habits that I know are going to just support this goal I want to go toward, the new habits just don't feel very good. They don't feel comfortable. They feel challenging. Sometimes it requires me to give up things that I'm pretty comfortable doing or eating or thinking. And it's at that point, this is the point where transformation actually occurs. And I want to talk to you from that point of the transformation, because that is, I think it's the tipping point, the point where you choose to lean fully in to the discomfort, knowing where it's going to lead you. or You can also make the choice to stay with what's comfortable, to start tomorrow, to say, oh, this isn't that big of a deal. I'm going to fall short on this new commitment I made just this once. And then tomorrow, tomorrow I'll recommit when we know that tomorrow never really comes. So I want to break down what it takes and what that point of the growth process is really teaching us so that the next time you're there, and maybe you're listening to this and you're there right now. I want this episode to be an anchor for you. You can come back and listen to it when you're at that point that you're like, ah, everything in me wants to run and hide or everything in me wants to backtrack on this new commitment I set and go back to what feels comfortable. Maybe another time will be a better time. I'll have more flexibility, more time, you know, whatever the excuses we give ourselves. Maybe that will be a better time for me to commit to this goal. And the truth is, There's never a better time. You're never more ready. You never feel more comfortable. 
it's understanding that bold transformation requires bold action because we are literally breaking habits that have been ingrained in us for years, maybe decades. And I shared this on Instagram recently that right before, I kid you not, every single time, right before my biggest breakthroughs, the breakthroughs that have completely catapulted me into a new level in every area, right before that point, right before the biggest breakdown, I almost always feel like a total imposter. Who am I to do this? Who am I to dream this big? Who's going to listen to me? And so hear me, if you are in this point right now, that is the sign that you're going in the right direction. It's the sign that you are dangerously close to your next breakthrough. And I love this Joe Dispenza quote. He's a genius when it comes to the brain and change and how you actually, his book is called Break the Habit of Being Yourself. But he said in this talk I listened to recently that the only way to step into a new future is to confront the aspects of you, the current you, that are not going there. We have to first be willing to confront the parts of us, the habits, the beliefs, the skills. You know, sometimes it's the relationships. We have to confront the parts of us that cannot come where we're going next. And that feels really uncomfortable, sometimes downright triggering. And so here's what I've learned. Let's just really talk about when you're at this point, this crossroads where everything in you is clawing to what feels comfortable, what feels certain, and what feels safe. In that moment is a powerful time to reframe your mindset, to realize that your brain inherently wants nothing to do with where you're going next only because it seems uncertain. That's the only thing. And there's certain parts of our genetic makeup that if we were to change them, we would actually die. And the same part of our brain that is scanning the horizon, looking for threats to our actual survival, like if we were to change the fact that our brain moderates our breathing, our heart rate, if any of that were to change, we would actually die. And to realize that the brain perceives any kind of change, any kind of newness in that same way, it feels like an actual threat to our survival. So there's this point in your own transformation where you have to confront that there's something about the way you've operated. There's something about the way you currently think about the relationships around you that isn't going to be able to come where you're going next if you're actually going to make this bold transformation. You cannot stay the same person. You can't continue to do all the same things and think the same thoughts if you want a new result. And it helps me in those moments to remember that if I'm committed to becoming the next version of myself, and if I'm, I mean, really, that's why we're here on this planet is to grow and expand and impact other people. So I either get to choose to stay the same, which let's be honest, that feels uncomfortable too, or I can choose to lean fully in to the discomfort of becoming this future version of myself and realize that the discomfort is there for a reason. And it's there as a part of me that I think reminds us of why it's worth it in the first place. So you cannot tiptoe your way to your higher self. I think about it like getting in, let's say, a really cold pool. And you can either choose to gradually ease your way in, allow your body to get more comfortable, or cannonball. And I'll be honest, in that exact situation, like not using that as an example for something else, like actually getting in a cold pool, I am totally the tiptoe my way in, get comfortable along the way kind of person. I'm married to the cannonball type of person. And if you think about it, there's so many times in life, let's just use the actual pool scenario where, you know, you can, you can gradually ease your way in, start to get more comfortable with the discomfort of the temperature, but you can't do that when you are, when we're talking about this kind of transformation, because it never feels comfortable and there's not enough time. Like we think that we're going to have all this time to get more comfortable with it, but 
I actually believe that the only way to create really bold transformation, like life-changing, you are not recognizable because you've just become this version of yourself who embodies a whole different mindset than you have up until this point. You cannot do that in a way that gradually feels comfortable. You have to lean all the way in. You have to do the cannonball into the deep end of what feels really uncomfortable right now if you're actually going to change. So I'm going to share with you some of the things that I do when I'm in these critical moments of my own growth. And I'm in one now. I am very clear that the results I'm going to create in my life and business this year and beyond are not going to come in the same way that they have up until this point. And that's really, really confronting. It challenges me on every level, the way I think, the way I operate, and it's really starting to poke at, (laughs) and it literally feels like that. It's like poking at a wound, but the wound is it pokes at some things that are really deeply ingrained in me, like my desire to control outcomes. And I know that my next level of growth requires me in really uncomfortable ways to let go of that control, to surrender more, to trust, to give up control to other people, which feels super uncomfortable to me. But I also know what's on the other side of it. So whether it's it's that, maybe you resonate with what I just shared. Maybe it's for you, you know that this next season is you stepping out and using your voice and being really, really unapologetic about your big dreams. There was definitely a transformation for me along the way that started with that feeling. But whatever it is, you know, this bold action that is required to have a bold transformation is when I am in this point, I look for where's the bold action that actually connects or aligns with this higher self that I'm stepping into. So however you like to frame it, you can ask yourself, okay, what would this higher self version of me do? Maybe sometimes that'll give you your answers or a great way to answer this for yourself is look at someone who you admire. And it's probably someone that you resonate with, you love reading their thoughts, or you just, you're really inspired by how they operate. I want you to really focus on how someone operates and how they think or their mindset around something more than just the results. Because unfortunately, in today's day and age in social media land, you know, people can put on the perception that they're more successful than they are. I'm not saying most people do this, but I'd rather have you look at the way someone operates, not so much their results. Look for someone who you really admire. You can't even explain why, but you're drawn to them. You're inspired by them. And I want you to start to notice and really study how do they operate? Are they investing in themselves? What are they listening to? What are they reading? So that's the first way that you can really start to connect with, okay, well, what are these bold actions that are going to be required? But the second one is, I think that our answers are usually within us if we're willing to listen. And so I'm going to share just a couple of the bold actions that I use in these critical moments when I'm ready to cannonball and continue cannonball after cannonball into the deep end of this next version of myself that I'm becoming. So my favorite one, and I talk about this a ton, is investing in a mentor. So I'll make an investment that feels very stretching, very expansive, either in terms of the financial amount or the person themselves and the kind of community it would put me around. That alone, investing from the the standpoint of who do I want to be a year from now and investing in that version of myself has never failed me. One of my favorite ways. So I have invested in a mentor this year. Another smaller, subtle way that I remind myself daily of this higher self I'm committed to becoming is even just in how I dress. So it could be challenging yourself to wear something bold, something you normally or the previous version of you wouldn't normally wear, or just something that shakes up the way you see yourself. That's another really powerful way to start stepping into your higher self. It could be a small but really bold action, like sending a scary email 
maybe there's something that you have had in your mind like, okay, when I get to this point, whatever made up point in the future we think we're going to reach, then I'll be ready to pitch to that podcast or then I'll be ready to host my first event or whatever that is. I want you to take one of those when I'm ready actions and I want you to do it now. I want you to plan the first event, pitch that podcast, do the thing that you feel like you're getting ready to be able to do or be worthy enough to do. And I want you to do it now and unattached from the outcome. You're just doing it to have the experience and show yourself that you can right now. And then the last one is massive accountability. And this is something I've really taken on in the areas of my life where I know that I tend to play small or quit on myself or rationalize why I'm not going to follow through with that action I promised. So I think that having this power of self-awareness is really huge. Being able to be honest with yourself And know yourself well enough to know where do you require accountability if you're really committed to leveling up. So what that looks like for me in this season is I was running with my friend Lori the other day. So we have weekly runs scheduled in. We don't cancel them unless we absolutely have to. And we committed to each other. We said, you know, we're not really showing up on social media. We're in this uncomfortable stage of growth. I don't even know what to say. And in that moment, we said, okay. We're committing to posting every single day on social media. And no matter how we feel, we're holding each other accountable to that. And there was one day, it was literally three days in. Now, this is what happens, right? You start off strong. You're like, yes, we're doing this. It only took three days in. And I remember like getting ready for bed. It was like 10 p.m. I knew fully I had not posted that day. And I was about to let myself off the hook for it. And then I get tagged in a post by Lori (laughs) saying the exact same thing. She was about to let herself off the hook. And laying in bed, 10 p.m. at night, she wrote this post and put it up. And you want to know what that made me do? I was like, damn it. (laughs) In the moment, I wasn't really grateful for the accountability. But I did it. And I felt incredible. And this is the thing. It feels uncomfortable when you're being held accountable. But on the other side of it, you feel amazing because you're in integrity with your own word. So I have accountability around some health and fitness goals. I joined a mastermind with my business partner. I'm taking the bold, scary action that's required to be consistent with the bold transformation I want. And I want to know what that looks like for you. I want you to text me. You can text me at 602 536 78 Two, nine. You can tell me you listened to this episode and I want to know what bold action is required for you to have the bold transformation that you are committed to this year. And, you know, it might feel super uncomfortable if you need to tell me the action so I can hold you accountable. Do that because, but be careful because I will hold you accountable. But it might feel really uncomfortable, but I want to remind you of this. Nothing and I mean nothing, is more uncomfortable than choosing to stay the same when you know you're meant for more. 